What's going on, YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers, your home for Wyckoff and Advanced Fibonacci TA. Guys, check out the picture. HD, baby. So I got my new Galaxy book. The microphones haven't come in yet. I got my new software, but to be honest, with the holiday weekend, happy belated Easter, by the way, I haven't had a chance to play with it. So we are screen recording this video. So let me know how this comes out, by the way, in the comments. Tell me if it sounds quiet, if it sounds loud, um, but we'll make do with the tools we have. Of course, Bitcoin had to go ahead and make a move on Easter. It did descend, broke our ascending channel here in the weekly time frame. Let's get an idea of where we're at in the market. It broke the ascending channel, but of course now it has come back up. It descended to what, 39.5-ish, I think, about 39.5. And now you can see we're back in our ascending channel. So what I want to focus on here with you guys, and we're going to go to the daily time frame as well. But remember, we have this ABC smaller wave correction pattern going on right now. And we could very well have just hit our top at 48.266. And we will just make a lower high and then descend further down towards our target of 23k or we have upside ability as you guys know looking at the fib here you can go to 52 59 or 66 523 do I think we can get the 66, 523? The other markets would have to turn extremely bullish. I think the markets have to turn very bullish for us to get to 52 or 59, but they are on the table, okay? As well as just descending from where we are, coming up for a lower high, hitting resistance perhaps here at the 236. We'll look at this on a smaller time frame for more specific levels because on the zoomed out weekly view, this is going to, uh, these are your big macro waves. Just a quick pattern review, guys. Law of three. We went over this last week. A lot of you were very interested in this, but this is a three wave price pulse pattern that I use for determining the market structure. Okay. Heavily inspired by GAN. GAN did not put this to Fibonacci or anything. It's just a market pattern. So this is something that I use when I'm looking at market structure. And the, another way you can look at this is positive energy, wave one, wave two, wave three, and then you have your negative energy, which is your A, your B, and your C correction. Okay. The market's finished. Now, many of you be may be thinking, but does this apply in other marketplaces? Three waves up, three waves down. Elliott waves is five and three, so that's a total of eight waves. But let's look. Let's look at what Bitcoin did in the 2018 bull run. Now, I used ABC waves here just to make it easier, but you can see your waves up, A, B, C, waves down, A, B, C, okay? This is a very common market structure pattern that I use for forecasting. Again, it's for macro waves. You can, and you'll find sub waves in here as well, but I do believe in the law of three and natural order and natural law in the marketplace as well. So this is something that I always pay attention to where we are in the marketplace. Now, Bitcoin's starting to pump a little bit as I'm talking to you. It's at 40,256, trying to come back into our channel. And what do we have here, guys? One thing to pay attention to as well is this parabolic rise. I want to go over some of these numbers with you, about 1,600%, okay? You got 1,600% there. Then you have, what, a 50-something percent price declination? 55% price decline. Then you have 140 up, and then you have 52% price decline down here from peak to trough, okay? So you have the, you have the symmetry in the market with the 55%, 52% price decline. A lot of people are thinking that means we can come up for a third top. You know, could we come up for a third top? Sure. Possible? Not probable, guys. The marketplace sentiment. And again, you want to trade contrarian. You know, you want to think that everybody's bullish or everybody's bearish. There's blood in the street. So now's the time to buy. That's true. But just understand you are in a risk asset class. Okay. Let me give you a quick review. Bitcoin has never existed in a secular bear market. It's only existed in a secular bull market. So there's cyclical bear markets, cyclical bull markets, and there's secular bull markets and secular bear markets. A secular market, it has to do with duration, the term, how long the market is. So we've been in a longest secular bull market in the history of the stock market just over 10 years. The longest bull market in the history of the stock market. Bitcoin has only traded in that bull market. And I just want to reiterate to you, in this bull market, market, which was not a bear market, Bitcoin still drops 50 plus percent in a bull market. Okay. Now, if the market, the secular bull run is broken, because remember the NASDAQ made its all-time high in November, the Russell 
within 48 hours of Bitcoin made its all-time high in November. Bitcoin made its all-time high in November. If the markets are pulling towards a secular bear market, you will still have bull cycles within a secular bear market, okay? And But you have to remember, your macro decline will be in play. And of course, you're going to have bounces and bull runs up and then declination of price. I don't have a specific timeline for this. I'm just sharing with you the macro sense of the market. And as you guys know, I personally do believe we are in a massive bubble, the everything bubble, trade at the dot-com bubble, trade at the housing bubble in 08. This is nothing new under the sun. I know bubbles are a new concept for people that just started trading, especially the younger people that only grew up really seeing crypto in the marketplace. It has never existed in a bear market. So I know there's guys out there that have targets like 500K, you know, 1 million in the next two, three years. Just keep something in mind with the dot-com crash. If you own the SPX at its high in 1999, you did not get back to your high from 1999 until 2012, 2013. You can be in a bear market for a long time. And if this thing unwinds in the equities, if it really starts to come crashing down, you know where we're going. I've told you guys this many times. This C wave projection has us at 10,591, but I've told you I've made videos on this. All of the marketplaces are basically returning to their long-term trend when we had a black swan event that crushed everything, okay? That's basically your long-term trend. I've made a video showing Fibonacci waves to get there, but that would be your virus low, okay? So you'd be looking at 3,800 Bitcoin. Not saying it's going there today, guys, but that will be the end result. So that could take a year. That could take six months. Who knows? I don't really care. I have enjoyed trading Bitcoin up and down as well as the alts and the other marketplaces. So this is just something I want you guys, especially the holders, to pay attention to. When we do make strong rallies, just be very well aware that the odds are stacked against you for a new all-time high. Not impossible, but odds are stacked against you. And that's a concept that you have to understand because of the cyclical nature of the marketplace. Let's jump to the daily. Daily time frame. Let's set up our chart, guys. Let's set up a chart for success here. So in the daily time frame, you can see we are holding this nice ascending angle. We are holding this line for a good week, seven days until uh, until Sunday when we fell down below. And we're trying to push back up above it, and we are back above it. We're back at 40,282, 40, which is really good at the moment. So we're pushing back into this channel. We want to stay in this ascending line. Now, the key thing is where are our possible areas of resistance where we could look to either short or flip to a long, right? So this is what you can do. You have to set your chart up to look for these areas of confluence. One thing you can do, what do most of the big banks do or some of the basic TA guys you see on the business news, they talk about the 50 moving average, the 200 moving average. Let's throw that on here. Up here at the same ceiling that we've had, 48,266. Actually, let's go ahead and throw our trend based fib so we can look at the resistances first, right? Let's go ahead and get our trend based fib. The reason we're pulling from here is because this is tracking hyper accurate and it still is the market trend top, which is 48,266. You have the 200 moving average laying across. Therefore, you know, with confluence, you have a strong area of resistance. As a matter of fact, an area of resistance so strong, this area of resistance ended up knocking you down, what, 9,000 points? Let's look. Uh, this was a 20% drop from 48,266, 9,700 points, okay? So we know this is a strong area of resistance. Where's the next area of resistance? Well, let's look at the 233, because that's one of my key things that I trade with. 233 EMA. Look where the 233 EMA is starting to line up with. Your 618, which we know is a key FIB retracement. So you have the 618, I have my GAN angle here, as well as the 233. So I have 44K, 48K. These are my two strongest areas of resistance. If price does get bullish, keeping in mind it can retrace at the 382 at 41. It can retrace at the 0.5 at 427. But what you want to see it do for its first big test just like it did right here, guys. It's first big test. Price needs to come up to that 618. It needs to come up to that 618 and flip this area. So if we can flip this area, use it as support, move up to try to get back above the 48,266, 
that would be a very bullish thing. What do I expect to happen? I expect price to make some headway on a rally. Okay, this is a given. Markets always rally. Markets move in waves. Very, very common occurrence. And you can say, well, how do you know that? Well, look, you have a low. You come back up. You make a wave. Made a double top. Come back down. People are like, oh, no, it's going down more. And then it goes back up. This is just how price works. It, it works in a wave fashion. So I expect price to rally. And again, depending on the strength of that rally, I expect us to at least test the 618. Okay. We haven't done that yet since we've descended from our moving average sandwich that we were wedged in, made our double top, our uh, white call box that we are in as well. And we descended and fell down. And now we're holding this bullish accumulation line. Okay. We're still holding this bullish accumulation line. So I'd like to see price come up test 44k and i think the you know the bias is most likely this is going to fail but if you do flip it and the markets do get bullish and maybe you know people talk about the theory of a melt up what is a melt up well so the traditional markets they made their all time high they had a price decline then they had the third strongest bear rally in the history of the of the market Okay, third strongest bear rally in history which makes sense after the longest bull run in history so realistically that bear rally was just that a bear rally they're not pushing up to new all-time highs but you're going to always have price fluctuations especially in a highly volatile asset 44 k 44k is key with the 618 super bullish 48 266 to retest the 200 anything beyond that you know that's fantastic but that will be another video let's keep it close into the vest right now because this is a key level that we have not retested yet so since we declined now, let's look at a couple other things here. Some people were asking me in DMs, I said, well, how do I know if price gets rejected? First thing I would tell you is join our room. <laughs> Second thing I would tell you is look at the examples you have in trend, okay? You have multiple examples in trend of rejections. You wanna identify your key resistance points, which is what we just did, such as the one fib, such as com combined with your 200, such as your candles are pumping up, you start getting supply dumped on you, you form a Wyckoff distribution box, you fall from the box, you see this over and over again, you tend to make shapes like a double top, you did it over here as well. Well, there's multiple factors you can look at to see if you're getting rejected. Conversely, obviously, if you flip it, it's a little bit more obvious. If you do get up above it, you got to hold it as support and not make a shape, which is what we did here. Okay. Again, my concern was not defeating the 233. It was being able to stay above it. If you guys remember me saying that, because that's the difficult feat. Let's go ahead and look at some support levels because we just did the resistance. Now let's look at the support. Now, one thing I want to do for the support, let's focus on that ABC correction pattern here on the weekly. So let's pull this pattern right here so we can see where our support levels would be if we do fall further out of this ascending channel, okay? So let's go ahead and pull this in some so we can do this. And let's get our wave going here. Go to the swing low, go up to our swing high. This is if we are at the C point right now in the wave and the wave's dropping us, we can look and see how accurate our projection is. Look at this. So your 0.5 FIB provided you the support, 38,656. Look at it almost on the dollar. You see that? This is how you know when you're looking at a good FIB layout. Now you can see the resistance as well to the rise coming back up the other way. We are back in our ascending channel. The number you really need to watch here, guys. So you have the 0.5 FIB, as Gan said, the most, the key, the pivotal retracement, Dallas, Dallas have the same as well. So you have 0.5 and you have the 618. So you have 38,656. You want to keep this held, which is what you did here. Okay? Okay. And then 36.4. If you lose a 618, you have weaker support structures, a 786, 886 at 33 and 31. But just keep in mind, you have that 32.9 on the weekly time frame, And if you lose that, you're sweeping down into the 20s at that juncture. Okay. You're sweeping down into the 20s. And of course, based off this projection, you have the 29K here for your projected um wave down if you do lose these other numbers but you're going to have different candle patterns form between here and there so you take another wave and we shall see how that works out but you did hold the 0.5 again that is very important and you need the whole 36.4 hold 36.4 further dissension after that will be dropping you substantially so that's what we're looking at for support that's what we're looking at for resistance let's see what the indicators are telling us about the actual price action 
Let's move this up. There you go. Finally getting a buying candle that may actually approach this candle's open, may actually approach to 21 EMA. Obviously, if the holiday weekend volume has been low, volume has been kind of low in general for the you know, recent trend here. Uh, volatility still expanded, starting to bottle up some. Let's look at our ATR. ATR is finally kicking up a little bit. I wanted to show you something on the ATR. We talked about this the other day. Let me pull this all the way in. All the way in. So that, remember, the ATR is binary. This is your complete bull run. You see this? When you have no volatility or very limited volatility like you see over here, that's accumulation, right? That's all you were doing there prior to the bull run was accumulation. And then you have parabolic rise, okay? Parabolic rise, peaking out with volatility here. Now, when you're looking at this, you probably think this is the all-time high. It's probably not. This is probably actually the dump, okay? The dump that happened afterwards because volatility would shoot way up. Remember, the separation of candles. And then you have your accumulation. Then you have your push up to your new all-time high, which I happen to know for a fact is right here on my green line. So this, this volatility has been declining, and now you're at your lowest level since the beginning of the bull run, lower than this whole accumulation box. This means a couple of things. Yes, it does mean a big move could be incoming, okay? A big move down or a big move up. It can definitely mean that. But it also means just from here down, basically since March, you've just been bleeding out. In other words, price is lower now than it was in March, and it's getting lower so slowly that you're not getting any volatility. The candles are just kind of dripping down, right? Just like yes, last night, the candles were up at 40,000 and change, 40,700, went down to 38.5 or 38.7, wherever it found found went down to. And now if it goes back down again and just slowly keeps dro dropping, you're just going to see this drop. We want volatility as traders, okay? Volatility is how you can get a lot of trades and a lot of price action. So that's something we definitely want. All right, guys, um, this is your video today. Let me know uh, if you have any questions, comments, put them down in the video description. Check out our website and marketmakers.trade. The link is in the video description with our promo code. I've been told to mention that. I put the promo code in the video description and it's on the top of our website. But if you forget it, we will give you the discount anyways when you join. And again, that's 40% off to join our Discord. And guys, we trade on BitGet. The link is in the video description as well. Check them out for anonymous trading and you get all the perks with our link. You can go participate in their tournaments. They do lots of free giveaways. They just did a 200 Bitcoin tournament. They do things multiple times throughout the year. Fantastic place to trade. No VPN is required. Another video coming tomorrow, guys. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.